high above Earth's windy skies, slowly rotating to the silent voids of space, is the Arthur C. Clarke Astronomical Observatory, Star Lab. Here, the International Space Authority, ISA, watches over an eternity of uncharted galaxies and the countless planets orbiting within their starlit borders. Five kilometers beyond Starland, the Earth shuttle Electra moves into a docking orbit with a giant space station. Aboard the shuttle, Dr. Richard Nicholson, a molecular biologist whose research in the field of alien spore mutation has just earned him the Brandenburg Prize, the most impressive award the scientific community of Earth can give. Aboard Star Lab, Dr. Nicholson's wife, Anne, awaits the arrival of the Electra. Here, the shuttle will refuel, then take them both back to Earth for the award ceremony at the International Achievement Pavilion, located in the center of New Vienna. It is April 28, 2026, a day no one on Star Lab will ever forget. As this week's adventure, the Resurrectionists of Lethe, removes us from the ordinary and takes us into the mysterious light and shadow of alien worlds. Roger, Electra. You're cleared for entry into Shuttle Bay 5. The doors are open and the refueling crew is standing by. Roger, Star Lab. And uh, send a systems technician down after we dock. I've been having a little trouble with the NO3 feeder line, the number four retro thruster. Nothing serious, but it wouldn't hurt to check it out. <coughs> Will do, Electra. Well, hi, Jerry. How's it going? Oh, hi, Mara. Mrs. Nicholson? Hi. Is that my husband's shuttle on the screen? It sure is. He'll be docking in less than two minutes. Oh, gee, I don't know if I can wait two minutes. Oh, Anne, he's only been gone two weeks. I know. That's why I can't wait two minutes. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Jerry? Right. Electra, could we please have Dr. Nicholson on screen 12? Roger, Star Lab. Hello, Anne. Oh, welcome back. You look terrific. Oh, you look pretty terrific. <laughs> How does it feel to be so famous? Not the same as when I was. I don't believe you. Neither do I. <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, you should have seen the looks on their faces. Richard? My God, what's happening? Starlight, we have a feeder line blown. An L3 level is not critical in range. Steal off the flight deck. Initiate emergency venting procedures. The escape pod. Get to the escape pod. Electra. Electra, can you hear me? It's too late. Starlight control to Stargazer 1. This is an emergency rescue alert. Dispatch paramedic ships to triangulator coordinates 558. Repeat, this is an emergency rescue alert. Dr. Cassidy? Come in, Carl. You look exhausted. It's been a long day. A long day. I just can't believe he's gone. He always took so much time with us at the Academy, always making sure we understood things. There were times when I was ready to quit, and I would have if he hadn't talked me out of it. I know. He was understanding with all of us. Is that the accident report? Yes. I just finished it. You know, three suffocation. It's so stupid. I'm going to find out why the Electra's retro thrusters weren't converted to a non-toxic fuel if it's the last thing I do. I, I, the Ithaca was converted. The Corinthia was converted. <laughs> why wasn't the Electra good? I'm sorry, Mora. <laughs> Mara, Commissioner White is coming through. 
Have the message recorded, Jerry. Mora will have to... No, no. That's all right, Carl. I'll be there in a minute, Jerry. Come on. I'll walk up the communications with you. Thanks, Carl. Yes, Commissioner, that's all been taken care of. Now, here's Dr. Cassidy now. Hello, Commissioner. Hello, Mora. Are you coming up to Star Lab? I'll be up there tomorrow. I just wanted to let you know that the ISA Council has ordered an honorary internment for Richard on Lethe. Supervisor Toadmaster has already been notified, and one of his mortuary ships will be there tomorrow afternoon. Toadmaster? Simon Toadmaster? I thought you knew. He's been Lethe's supervisor for nearly two years now. How did a man like that ever end up on a satellite for the dead? Lethe, a tiny world of restless sunsets and lonely star-filled nights, orbiting like a ghost moon at the twilight edge of an alien world. Alien Worlds continues. Molecular biologist Richard Nicholson approaches Star Lab aboard the Earth shuttle Electra. Moments away from docking, a retro thruster feeder line suddenly explodes, flooding the shuttle with toxic NO3 gas, a lethal vapor that takes the lives of Dr. Nicholson and the shuttle pilot. Dr. Nicholson's wife, Anne, witnesses the tragic accident from the bridge of Star Lab control and now sits alone in her quarters, silent, sad, and bitter. Meanwhile, preparations are underway to transfer the body of Dr. Nicholson to Lethe, an artificial burial satellite 1,000 kilometers in diameter, created for the internment of Earth's honored dead. The casket's just arrived, Master. Good work, you're very good. Let's get on with it. Lethe's supervisor, Simon Toddmaster, a man from Mara Cassidy's past, a master of the dead to whom no undertaking is insignificant. Number six, Professor Joseph Digby Allen. Number seven, General Arnold Boom Boom Bernstein. Number eight, Prime Minister Ichiro Suzuki. My, my, what expensive caskets. Is this the entire manifest, Berkey? All except this one, Master. Oh, it's an interesting casket. Who's inside? Richard M. Nixon. Well, I thought he'd never pass on. Neither did anyone else. And did he leave any incriminating documents? Only an 18-minute last will and testament tape. What was on it? We'll never know, Master. There's nothing on it. I'm not at all surprised. Well, come on, Berkey. We have work to do. That is an affirmative, Master. A simple yes will do, Berkey. If you knew how I loathed affirmative, you'd be quaking in your boots. Or whatever it is you call those things on your feet. My apologies, Master. Accepted. Now, you, you mentioned an ISA communique. It's on the teleprinter in the control room. Shall we? After you, Master. Here it is, Master. Well, what does it say? We've been ordered to Star Lab to pick up the body of Dr. Richard Nicholson. So, Dr. Nicholson has finally shuffled off his mortal coil. Cause of death? An accident. NO3 suffocation. <laughs> How utterly fitting that the man who used to give me so much gas should succumb to a lethal dose himself. I don't understand. Well, poor Richard and I worked together on Star Lab once upon a time as fellow science officers. We were Professor Cassidy's golden-haired boys. Oh, you mean you used to have yellow protein filaments growing on that shiny dome of yours? 
And golden-haired boys is just a figure of speech, Berkey. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, well, I got into some trouble while I was stationed on Star Lab. Nothing serious, just a little glowstone smuggling, but they railroaded me into prison anyway. I'd still be there if Lethe hadn't suddenly required a man of my unique talents. From prison to Lethe? What's the difference, Master? Yes, indeed. And volunteering for this post was sheer inspiration. Berkey, Professor Cassidy had a daughter, Maura. Find out if she's still on Star Lab. And find out if Ann Nicholson is there, too. She could be very useful to us, considering how closely she and her husband work together. As you wish, Master. Ratchet? Master? Berkey and I are going to Star Lab. Prepare the August Omega. Yes, Master. By the way, Mrs. Thorndancer is waiting to see you. Well, send her in, Ratchet. My dear Mr. Todd Master. My dear Mrs. Thorndancer. I just couldn't leave without thanking you for everything. Twenty-four hours with my husband alive and happy... Reliving the best times we ever had. Oh, Mr. Toddmaster, it was wonderful. Well, I'm delighted that you're delighted. But remember, this is our little secret. Oh, don't worry. I won't breathe a word to a living soul. Goodbye, Mr. Toddmaster. Oh, well, it's never really goodbye, Mrs. Thorndancer. Only au revoir. Ratchet, what's the progress on the Thorndancer experiment? She relived a period with Professor Thorndancer during which he was deeply involved with mind weapon research. Some of his workable hypotheses were so dangerous he never revealed them to his colleagues, but he did confide them to his wife, and she talked her head off about them. The professor's replicate functioned so well that it had her discussing mind weapon theory within five minutes. The data is in the Omni Extrapolator now. Good work, Ratchet. Stay tuned. Ah, Berkey. What did you find out about Maura Cassidy? She's now Star Lab's research director. And Nicholson is there, too. Well, 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 well. Are you feeling all right, Master? I'm feeling very well, Berkey. Thank you. The Orcus Omega awaits you, Master. Thank you, Ratchet. Come along, Berkey. We mustn't keep the dead waiting. Lethe's sinister supervisor and his assistant, Berkey, descend to the mortuary satellite's launch bay and board the sleek, cobalt-blue funeral ship, Orcus Omega. Orcus, the ancient Roman name for Pluto, the god of Hades. And Omega, the Greek symbol for the end, the final singularity. Meanwhile, on Star Lab, Anne Nicholson has just been told about the ISA decree to have her husband honorarily interred on Lethe. Oh, I can't help the way I feel, Maura. I am not going to Lethe, and that's all there is to it. Well, you still haven't told me why you won't go. It's grotesque. Taking him away from me like this and hiding him in a place where I'll never see him again. Couldn't he be put in cryosuspension, Maura? Have you asked the council about that? Maybe there's still a chance that Richard could be brought back to me someday. And you know it's too late for that. All right. Then you take him to Lethe, Mora. You salute all those stupid flags and smell all those dying flowers. And, yes, listen to people who never knew him lie about what a good friend he was. There won't be any flags, Anne, or any flowers or speeches or anything like that. It's a private ceremony between you and Richard. Oh, I'm tired, Mora. Will you please leave me alone? All right. I'll uh, be on the control bridge if you need me. Roger, Orcus Omega. Your TV coordinates are 068 at 204. And you're clear.
Clear for entry into level C docking bay one niner. Thank you, Star Lab. Orcus Omega out. How long will we be on Star Lab, Master? Just long enough for you to load the late Dr. Nicholson and for me to have a few words with my past. Ah, oh, Star Lab. I'm looking forward to seeing what goes on inside. Well, I'm sorry, Berkey, but I'm afraid you'll have to stay aboard the ship. Not again. Berkey, how often do I have to remind you that you are an image infusion android, an illusion? That you only have substance when the light is right, that you'll vanish if the light should change. I'm sorry, but if someone sees you one minute and then doesn't see you the next, they'll know that I'm in control of an illegal procedure. You don't want me sent back to prison, do you? Berkey? Oh, don't rush me, Master. I'm thinking. The Orcus Omega maneuvers into a docking orbit with Starlab. On board, Leafy's tall, black-cloaked supervisor, Simon Toddmaster, and his assistant, Berkey. An image infusion android whose physical presence depends solely on his silent collisions with light. A man and a machine, two manipulators of all those things that go bump in the night, and whose presence on Star Lab will soon draw everyone they encounter into the death chilled landscapes of an alien world. Continues. 24 hours away from receiving the Brandenburg Science Award, molecular biologist Richard Nicholson loses his life in an Earth shuttle accident. In view of Dr. Nicholson's contributions to science, the ISA Council orders an honorary interment on the Lethe Mortuary satellite. But Dr. Nicholson's wife, Anne, grief stricken and bitter, refuses to go to Lethe. Lethe's supervisor, Simon Toddmaster, and his android assistant, Berkey, arrive at Starlab aboard the dark mortuary ship, Orcus Omega. A former assistant to Maura Cassidy's father, Toddmaster is no stranger to Starlab. Hello, Maura. It's wonderful to see you. Simon... You're the last person I ever expected to see on Star Lab. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I mean, I didn't mean that personally. Well, you know what I mean. It's all right, Maura. I understand. I see. Ooh, ooh. Aren't those flowers for me? And the roses are here. Thank you, Simon. Uh, who are the other ones for? Mrs. Nicholson. We always give a bouquet of twilight blossoms to the widow. I doubt if you'll have a chance to present them. Anne doesn't want to go to Levy. I see. Well, perhaps if I spoke to her, I do have a way of making people understand the importance of being present at the final interment. Well, if you think your talking to her will do any good, I'll take quarters. Mara, is Mr. Toddmaster there? Mm, yes, he is. Dr. Nicholson's body has been taken aboard the Orcus Omega, Mr. Toddmaster. Thank you. Oh, would you mind telling my assistant that I'll be there in a few minutes? Will do. And now, Maura, if you will show me to Mrs. Nicholson's quarters. Yes, Mr. Toddmaster, the flowers are beautiful. What did you call them again? Twilight blossoms? That's right, Anne. Twilight blossoms. You know, when you first came in, I thought they were ugly. But there's something about their fragrance now that makes them seem so alive. Anne. Yes? Would you like to see Richard again? Alive? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I want to see Richard. I want to hold him and touch him and talk to him. Then come with me to Lethe. 
and have Richard back again. Oh, Richard, back again, yes. Take my hand, Mr. Toddmaster. Lead me. We've just got confirmation on it, Mora. Toddmaster's in control of image infusion, and he's using it to create the illusion of bringing the dead back to life. The dead? But, but why? So he can extract classified military and scientific information from those who were at one time associated with the men and women now interred on Lethe. In some cases, if a husband and wife would work together. In other cases, colleagues and fellow officers. I still don't understand, Commissioner. What exactly does he do? Well, he creates an image infusion replicant of the man or woman whose secrets he wants. Then he invites the husband or wife or former colleague to Lethe drugs them and puts them in the room with the replicate. The illusion is so perfect and the drug so effective that the people actually believe they're face to face with someone they once knew and loved. And the replicate is programmed to ask questions designed to make people reveal what Todd Master wants to know. It's insane. Commissioner, he's with Anne right now. Get on the intercom and tell her to stay put. I'll stand by. Anne! And it's Mara. Hello, Mara. I'm feeling much better, thank you. Oh, thank heavens that you're still right. You were right about Mr. Toddmaster. He's persuading me to go to Lethe after all. Anne, Anne, listen to me. And since I... I'll be back in a few days and didn't really feel like seeing anyone, Mr. Toddmaster suggested I leave this recording. Recording? Jerry! Yes, Mara. Shut the doors on the Orcas Omega's launch bay. Mara, uh, the Orcas Omega took off three minutes ago. Oh, God, no. Was Ann Nicholson aboard? Yes, she was. Maura, what's wrong? Jerry, what's the Delta One ZTA? 14 minutes, 50 seconds. Contact them right now. Give them the flight plan of the Orcus Omega and tell them to intercept it. Right. I was too late, Commissioner. They're gone. Gone? Damn. Was well, there anything you can do? Delta One is 14 minutes out. I've ordered John and Buddy to divert it and try to intercept the Orcus Omega. Stay with it, Maura. I'm coming up on a priority shuttle. I'll do my best, Commissioner. Maura, I just talked to Buddy and John. They can't do it. Delta One doesn't have enough fuel. All right. Contact the Stargazer Security Station. Tell them to scramble a pursuit cruiser. And find out who the pilot is. I want to talk to him. Chance to dream, eh, Berkey? Dream? What's a dream, Master? An expedition to the interior of the subconscious. Something humans do when they sleep. What's the subconscious, Master? A place where secrets live. In Mrs. Thorndance's case, thought weapon secrets. In Anne's case, bacteriological warfare secrets. Disease weapons based on Richard's alien spore mutation research. Weapons so terrible, he hid the data tapes for them, and only Anne knows where they are. Amazing, isn't it, Berkey? The way a Twilight Blossom trance can bring out the best possible secrets about the worst possible things. Did she tell you where the tapes are? Not yet, but she will when her dead husband rises from the grave and takes her in his arms again. Oh. In times past, there were legends and myths that told how the dead became the undead and walked the regions of night, passing ancient moonlit walls and mirrors, casting neither shadow nor reflection. But because dreams of resurrection are ageless, and the powers of darkness infinite. The demon sorcerer of the past has reappeared as the Simon Toddmaster of the future. Simon Toddmaster, the resurrectionist of Lethe, a man walking the regions of night beneath the cold, moonlit skies of alien worlds. <laughs> The 
Resurrectionists of Lethe was based on a story by Betty Ulias and written by Ron Thompson. Associate producer, Jeff Allen. Music director, Tom Rounds. Engineer, Stu Jacobs. Technical consultant, Peter Skye. Alien Worlds was created, produced, and directed by Lee Hansen and is distributed by Watermark Incorporated. And so, until next time, this is Roger Dressler inviting you to join us for the conclusion of the Resurrectionists of Lethe on Alien Worlds. Mm -hmm.